Okay, so I just have a few minutes today to introduce um, the mission, the progress, and the direction for the Global Network Advancement Group. As we've heard throughout uh, these, throughout this meeting, it's really all about partnership. And the Global Network Advancement Group has arisen uh, to fulfill a very important mission of trying to fulfill the needs not only of the Large Hadron Collider, but as shown here, uh, of major uh, state-intensive science programs. Uh, well, time is very short, so let me just say, I couldn't help relating to what Larry said. I mean, this is the progress. What, what is driving the mission and giving us the confidence and the goal to pursue this great mission is really the science. It's the long-term nature of our science program that's really driving us uh, to maintain and try to find solutions to this great problem. Following the Higgs discovery, we certainly are continuing through machine learning. As Larry said, through, we really are making tremendous progress also uh, to continue to explore with ever greater depth the data that we have and looking forward to much uh, greater data volumes and therefore the challenges. This global system, which we first foresaw with major uh, initial developments by Caltech and UCSD together, has now grown to 170 cent tier two centers at universities and smaller laboratories and 13 national centers. It looks highly ordered, but we've come to understand it's more and more having the nature of a global dynamic system, and that is also part of the challenge, challenges of both scale and complexity. The research and education networks of the world, both uh, on a continental scale and regionally, have arisen, have taken up the challenge to support this program and others, and that's one of the great keys to their success. But as uh, I mentioned, the challenge is getting ever greater. One of the great examples is the scenic network, which not only is functioning as a wonderful regional network and a partner, but is, as you can see, is reaching out to the east and the west and helping us to form this global fabric in the context of the collaborations I mentioned. Uh, the traffic continues to grow. Uh, we've already recovered from COVID, as you can see, in terms of the traffic. And, uh, as of 2020, we learned that we really are going to face a great, very great challenge in the next phase of our program, which is scheduled to start in 2029, but even between now and then, our con traffic continues to grow, and the problem of doing analysis at hundreds of sites continues to come to the fore. Uh, against this backdrop, the Global Network Advancement Group arose in 2019, 2019 to bring together researchers the national uh, research and education networks and regional networks, the global exchange points and operators, among them very prominently uh, Starlight, um, in order to share the infrastructure and support all of these science programs. And within that, in 2020, we also formed two very important working groups, uh, the San Soto Global Working Group, which can create uh, overlays across this uh, ensemble of networks with bandwidth guarantees and with advanced services, and also our global network advancement, uh, our global network advancement data intensive sciences working group, which is focused on uh, meeting the needs of these, uh, of the LHC program and other data intensive science programs, uh, for seeing a growing challenge and a growing need to manage resources, to interact, have the network interact as an intelligent entity with the insights to make non-trivial decisions in terms of allocation of resources, meeting SLAs, developing the very metrics of success, of success in this new type of global system. One which we think will not only serve uh, programs, but will revolutionize the way in which the networks themselves are operated and managed, and even more broadly, to serve as a, uh, an example of the kind of new global systems that can be built. So this just shows some of the people. I just, uh, I'm running out of time. So let me really uh, emphasize the partnership, showing that we're making great progress. We have two global test beds beyond the supercomputings, which have been great uh, examples of focus and of progress themselves. We have reached a new milestone of establishing persistent research uh, infrastructures to do these great developments. One is the auto goal sense um, uh, testbed, which you can, if you look carefully, you'll see expands 
uh, between continents, both to the west and the east, and it continues to grow. And another is this programmable, fully programmable P4 test bed uh, led by the uh, Giant uh, free router developments, uh, which are now at uh, 30 sites in areas around the world. So uh, let me skip to the end because of the time. Um, we have a new architecture, which I won't have time to cover, which uh, includes uh, new levels of visibility with multiple tools, which are listed there. Intelligence, uh, being able to make stateful decisions and eventually to use machine learning to optimize what we do and develop those metrics I talked about. Controllability, uh, network operating systems of a new kind, both the Jeon free router and uh, Sonic and other tools that go with it and also uh, profound levels of, of orchestration. Uh, so this shows what happened at the last SC, but uh, like I said, the point was it was sort of a watershed. You see these uh, terabit per second uh, network connections, which many of you worked on to make possible to bring that into the, into the show floor. But even more importantly, for example, in California, it has left behind these persistent, more advanced infrastructures. This is a cartoon showing what's happening in California uh, between Caltech, uh, UCSD, Starlight, and other sites. And, and also uh, here, what's happening here at UCSD through the great work of uh, John Graham and others, including you see Atkinson Hall in the upper right, going beyond 100 gig to 400 gig, multiple 400 gigs, and scaling up as we develop these new systems. So that's it. Uh, the top line message is we need to develop a new type of system to meet these needs. It is the science mission that gives us the persistence to do this across decades. Uh, it is a new type of system which will not only, we hope, fulfill the needs, but also will change the way in which research and education networks themselves are operated and managed. And a new, le new level of, of cooperation between the networks and the science programs they serve in a joint mutual development. So between the NRP, the GRP, the GNA, and the regional uh, research platforms, uh, this is kind of a grand new direction. There's been tremendous progress. This is a wonderful uh, time to bring this up, and this meeting is a wonderful occasion uh, to bring us together to discuss it. Thank you. <laughs>